Hello Simple Planes, Snow here, and I'm back with another tutorial. Um, one of the requested things, um, as I saw on the beta announcement post, was that people are confused about how to use the um, new inputs um, um, that um, WMP78 um, came up with. Um, I thought that it would be useful if I could explain it to you guys, um, so that's what I'm going to do in this video right now. Um, first of all, um, there's going to be three kind of things I'm going to explain in this video, so three parts and the funky trees um, forum post that WMP78 made. So first thing I'm going to cover is inputs. So inputs are what you've put into the part. So the part takes a sort of value that you give it and it acts accordingly to that value. So what you're, what the inputs are, are, are is that value you're giving the part to act upon. So um, there's a variety of inputs that are available. Um, we all know these and then these are always the things we used before but then now it's just that there's options to alter these inputs um, to do new things. So um, in order to give a kind of idea of um, how things work, I thought that it would just be best for me to explain um, each input and how they work. So um, I'm going to just cover each and every one of these. So first of all, pitch. So pitch, uh, we all know, um, it's just going to be that um, W and S, um, when you use uh, when you're flying the plane, if it goes up or down, that kind of thing. Um, the elevator controls, um, pitch only had uh, pitch has a range of values um, it can um, give from negative one to one. So the negative max, negative minimum, up to a positive maximum. The roll is the same. Um, we all know the roll. It's A and D in the controls. Um, it can give a positive maximum of plus one. And negative minimum of negative one um and then there's no um the only other input you can give it it's a value of zero when you're not pressing on anything else yaw is the same um it's also a negative um one as the minimum and then at uh, positive one as the maximum value you can have and there's also um a value of zero if you don't press on anything throttle is different throttle can have a range of values from zero to one um it can be think of it as a gradient if that makes sense for you um to best demonstrate this um i just came up with like a simple analogy ish thing um a visual demonstration um to say so we're going to take a piston and we're going to set it to the input of the piston to um a to throttle so let's see um okay when I load the level, let's see. Okay, so I'm gonna increase the throttle to about 50%. Okay, so now it's at 50%. So what the um, what the piston perceives it as is we're giving a, a input value of 50%. So piston's like, okay, so I got a 50% input value, so I'm gonna act accordingly, and then I'm gonna extend myself to. Um, 50% of a maximum extendable length. So in different case, if it increases up to 80%, the piston's like, okay, so now it's telling me that I need to extend up to 80% of my maximum length, so 0 0.8 in just um, simple integer terms. Um, um, if it makes sense, now if I pull this way up to 100%, the, the piston perceives it as, oh, I need to extend to uh, maximum 100% of my allowed lengths and I put put it down to zero it's like oh I don't have any input not any input actually it's more like it gets input of zero if that made sense I hope that made sense actually um next is um but then just remember that throttle it can range from anywhere from zero to one so 0 0.1 0 0.2 anything in between Break is different. Break is along the lines. Um, break is sim more similar to um, pitch roll and yaw than throttle in that it can only have an input of zero or one. But then this doesn't have a negative value. Um, break doesn't have a negative value can input it. It can only go from zero or one. So if I set this input, the input of the piston to break now I'm not pressing on the brake button. So the piston is receiving an input of zero. 
that's why it's not extending. But I, if I press on brake, the piston extends to its maximum allowed length because the only other option in, in the brake input is one. So it means that it extends to its maximum. I hope that makes sense again. Um, next is, let's see, um, trim. So we all know trim. Trim is pretty um, familiar with you guys. Um, trim is a little bit different from throttle in that it also has it's it's also a gradient in that it can range from um, a value to a value it can range from anything in between but trim also has a negative max negative minimum it can go down to negative one here but that doesn't show on the piston because the piston doesn't have a um, action that corresponds to negative one when I set back at zero if I extend it ever so slightly, the piston um, takes this trim value and it converts it to its action. If that makes sense, if that, that's a bit of an analogy -ish thing. Um, but um, if I extend it up to its maximum, it takes this maximum value of this maximum trim, which is going to be one. So this is this part is going to be positive one. This should be zero, and this should be negative one. But then trim can um, range from anything in between. That's why it's different from throttle. Throttle can only go from 0 to 1, but it can also be a gradient. Um, the same thing applies for VTOL. VTOL is basically the same thing as um, trim. It's just that it just has a different name, so we can use it for different things. Um, landing gear. Landing gear is similar to brake. Remember, a brake had only uh, input value allowed of 0 and 1. But landing gear also has a only allowed value of 0 and 1. So if I set the input to landing gear, it means that initially I don't have, I have the landing gear activated, which is a value of 0. But if I turn off the landing gear, the input is now 1. So the piston extends to its maximum length. I think you're getting just a bit. Um, it should be kind of. It's pretty much the same thing over and over again, except that all these um, put values have kind of unique ways in that they can give a value. Um, fire guns is also similar to brake and um, landing gear. It only has a value of zero and one if it's pressed or not. If you're pressing on the, I guess it's the space bar for or for default on PC users. Um, similar to fire weapons. It's also a value of zero or one if you're pressing on the thing or not. Launch countermeasure is also similar. Um, it's only zero and one. The same applies for every other activation group um, input. Um, if, you're, if, you're act if you've activated the activation group, you're giving it a value of one. If you've not activated the activation group, you're giving it a value of zero. So I hope that made sense. That's the end of the input section. And then these are basically the values you can change. So that's what you're putting into the part. The part is receiving a value that is um, determined by this input. So other than that, we can look at the next section, which is flight data. So flight data is basically um, some things about your craft, your um, aircraft, basically. Um, the altitudes, these are all pretty self-explanatory. So altitude is just going to be aircraft altitude in meters so these are also going to be sort of variables you can change so if i were to say um if i were to use altitude in a craft here as an input then it mean that um whatever the altitude is in meters is going to be the output value and it's going to try to put that in here so let's see um i think it's, that's how it's supposed to work but then um I'm not entirely familiar as much with um, the flight data inputs um, as I am with these inputs and the function, but I'll try to do my best to explain these. Um, let's see. Yeah, definitely. You can see here, um, my altitude as, is at 71. So my piston took that and it was like, okay, I need to extend up to 71, which is ridiculously high. I mean, why, this is probably why you don't see this, um, this piston head you're, you're usually supposed to see right now. So we know that's the altitude of this location is 71 meters. Then if I apply the same logic and take, let's say, altitude. Oh, 
Oh yeah, okay. So one really, really useful thing that came out this patch is the ability to use um, basically operators or basically mass functions as a part of the input here. So the input is here. Um, what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna use the subtract function, subtract operators. I'll do to this, spell that correctly, right? Um, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, oh, okay, so it, it was just a um, spacing issue. So one more thing. So syntax is important. Syntax is very important. So you must put a space between your um, operators. So what I did right now is I took the altitude and I subtracted 70 from it, which gave a value of one. And then so the piston took the value of input one, which means it's its maximum value and I extended to the maximum length. So that fixes this issue. Um, so that's one important takeaway from this video. If you're um, trying to watch this and learn about the input functions that you must for, for the syntax. So how you um, write stuff here is that you must put a space between space is between um, the inputs. So remember to put spaces between um, the operators when you're using them. So alternatively, if I were to say mm, uh, 70.5, then that means that um, since the altitude value we know it's 71, 71 meters, so it values to 71, and then we take on um, we're subtracting 70.5 from it, then we know that it should only extend up to half. And you see that exactly happens. So this is how you're using you should use these functions. So um, I'm not exactly sure, but then let's say you're trying to make a bomb bay that opens at a specific altitude, then if you set the um, input of whatever activates your bomb bay to altitude, um, let's say subtracted by, so if you want it to open at like, I say 3000 meters, then if you sub make it um, your, your function altitude subtracted by 3000 then it means that when you're exactly at 3000 meters your bomb bay will should uh, be at your bomb bay should receive an input of zero if you go any higher then your bomb bay will open so if you're at 3001 meters then since this is 3001 and you're um, subtracting 3000 from it the input the that your bomb bay gets should be one and therefore it should ex uh, extend up, up to its maximum value and open up and you, should, you can be, um, you can have, I guess, an altitude activated bomb bay like that. So that's another very useful function for builders who want um, to do that sort of thing. Um, in addition to, um, these are all basically the same, same thing. You can all use these in a similar manner to what I demonstrated with the altitude um, data, but um, they're all just different things. Um, um, I recommend that you give a um, good read through all of these and the explanations for them. Um, yeah, and then also get uh, pi and e. So pi is just going to be pi as in 3.14, that thing. Um, and then e as in the natural base e, which is like 2.1 something. Um, and I covered this earlier. We talked about um, how the, you can use these operators and then make sure that um, you're putting the spaces between uh, before and after these operators for them to work properly. So that's some more syntax. Um, finally, our third section is going to be the functions. So functions are very useful. So what you can do is that in the input here, you can use a function to kind of alter the input you give it. So um, the best example I found for this was that um, I'd like to use a hinge rotator and a, another part to demonstrate. Let's see, um, this should do. Okay, so what I'm going to change this input to now is instead of VTOL, I'm going to go take it to roll, right? So normally that this means that when I press on positive roll, the hinge rotator should perceive a positive one value. So it goes like that. And then I'm not pressing anything, it just goes back to zero because it receives input of zero. Now, if I press on negative roll, the rotator receives an input of negative one, so it, it performs the action corresponding to negative one. Not pressing anything, so I go back to zero because the input is zero. Now, I can use a function to change this. 
if you look here, um, one of the functions available to us is the absolute value function. So if I take abs parentheses, oh, okay, abs parentheses, roll like that. Now, it's better if you see it first. I'm going to press on positive roll. And as I expect, if it performs the action corresponding to that positive roll. Not pressing anything, it goes back to zero. Now I'm going to press on negative roll. So I should input a value of negative one with my action, but then it performs the action corresponding to a positive roll. Why is that? That's because I use the um, absolute value function to convert the negative one to a positive one. So the perceived value of the input by the hinge rotator is positive one. So it, it performs the action corresponding to positive one instead of the negative one that I inputted. That's because I use the function. But zero is zero, so it values to zero. Um, all these functions are just pure mass and things. Um, there, there's also um, there's explanations for each one of them that you can use. Um, if you're not too familiar with mass, this might be a bit difficult, but then if you've gotten the hang of it, these are all pretty much um, common uh, programming terms, stuff like um, floor and uh, seal. These are all just um, generally um, lots of different functions used in programming languages. Um, if you're familiar with any uh, coding at all, this, this should be um, pretty familiar to you. Um, let's see. So. I think that the absolute value example is pretty straightforward in understanding how the functions work. Otherwise, um, that should be pretty much it. Um, I think I've done a good enough job explaining how the functions work. So basically, um, the two available input data is inputs. These are user controlled, so you can control these yourself. And flight data depends on what your craft is doing. So these are all output value so these all have an assigned value so i remember remember we co covered the inputs uh, how they have a um minimum and maximum and it depends on which type of input it is for pitch it was uh, um, from negative one zero and one those only three values and then there's different ones that have a gradient such as throttle remember and there's also trim and vto which has a minimum of negative one and a, po um, and a maximum of positive one, but also has a gradient. And then these all other things which only have a value of zero or one. And then we also saw that altitude um, works as uh, as it's explained. So the aircraft's altitude in meters, we saw, remember, with the um, piston example, um, since the, we were out at altitude of 71 meters, when you just put in input as altitude, the piston received a value of 71 so I have to extend to 71 um, and then just finally functions functions are what you the x here and is in this example is what you want to put in here so these are all values you can use to put into functions which should, the functions evaluate that and give out a final value that final value is what the part receives as a value to act upon I hope it's not as confusing as it sounds. Um, I think that most people who can, um, who want to use these, can understand my explanation. Um, that's pretty much it. So I uh, hope I feel like I did a good enough job of explaining things. Um, I hope this helped you guys. Um, and uh, yeah, have a good day. Thank you.